Hi everyone! Okay, I'm going to do a tutorial on making embellishments and paper clips. I printed these little, um, I th I'm looking for them actually, what did I do? With them? Oh, I guess I put them away. But I did print out these little uh, puzzle pieces in, they are in the store. I will link in the description box to the store which will allow you to download them for free and I've done them in two sizes and there are three different styles so it gives you lots of versatility I believe this is the bigger one and then this size is the smaller one so they are a little a little bit different in size <clears throat> if you want to know exactly the centimeters they are four and a half by five it should be. No, yep, close to five. Actually this one's four and a half by four and a half. And this one is, this one's a little more than four and a half but it's narrower. So it's not quite three, it's 3.2 for that one. So there's, like I said, there's two different sizes and I'm working on different um, pieces for my book so I thought I might as well go ahead and I did sort of set things up a little bit so it wouldn't take so long although I'm yammering way too much so let's get started on this. Um, so I thought I'd start with this little puzzle piece. Now what I did was I printed one out of a 45 pound weight cardstock and then one just out of um, I think it's a 32 weight just so I could cover the paper clip, which I should get out. And depending on the size of uh, piece that you have, that's what determines what size paper clip I use. So I have two different ones. I have these, these small ones and then these larger ones. I likely will be using the small ones. So, first thing I want to do, th this one I've already sort of laid out, but I'm going to ink the edges and I'm not going to do it with ink, I'm actually just going to use my marker just because it's really awkward getting into the little corners. So if you use a marker, and my regular followers will know this, uh, you just go from back to front so that if you slip you're going to slip, see, you're going to mark the back, but you're not going to mark the front. So it makes it much easier. There are tons of different ways you can use these. You can use them as the base, which we're going to use today, or you can use them as an embellishment in amongst something else that you're making. Uh, we're going to do a paper clip, maybe two, as well as a little tuck spot because I kind of decided I needed a little tuck spot for the book I'm working on. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to do this one too, even though it'll be at the back. I'm a little on the picky side. Normally I'd be chatting away, but this is more of an actual tutorial and not just craft along with me. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of viewers who don't normally watch me. Okay, so you won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> There we go. Now, I have these cute little tickets which I need to um, ink. Let me just grab my little ink thingy. I finally got a new ink pad. They, they've discontinued the VersaFine and now it's VersaFine Claire. But they're completely different colors, so yeah. 
And I can't find the color that I really like, which is a vintage sepia. So I finally got a new one. I um, ordered it from Walmart. Took six weeks. I can't believe how long it took. And then I get there after getting the phone call saying it's in, and they're like, oh no, it's in transit. I said, no, it's not. You gave me a phone call. Man, I waited forever for them to go find it. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't in the system. I'm like, how could it not be in the system if you called me? How is that even possible? But anyway, it is what it is, and I got it, and so that's all that matters. So I'm going to do that with these cute little Tim Holtz stickers. Not stickers. Um, it's a stamp. It's a mini one. So I have this in a bigger version, but I didn't know they did mini. And I wasn't expecting a mini version. <laughs> so when I saw it, I thought, oh, that's tiny. But it's actually perfect. I thought I would lay that there. And... These are the tiles. I don't know if they're still even available, but I got all of these. These are also Tim Holtz. Now, if any, if anybody's used them, they're very thick. So I peel them away. I'll show you. I just stick my thumbnail in there, but you can use um, uh, a little craft knife to get them started. And then I just peel off the back. Because I really love the front, but I don't want it super dimensional because then it thickens up your book. So I just peel that off, and there you go. And then these were words that I had printed out, so I just attached it so yeah, in such a way that it would cover the J, and I thought I would just add that to that. So I'm going to move this up higher, like that. Uh, sorry, before I... Yeah, I'm going to do that first. Sorry. It's still early. <laughs> I haven't been up for very long. It's miserable outside, too. Windy and rainy. Definitely fall in BC. Okay, so... I'm going to put that... The trick to these is that, you know, you want to tell that it's actually a little puzzle piece, right? Make sure I did it on the right one. I did. Okay. Then this is a tricky one. So I use my little tweezers so that I can get at these pieces easily. They're very narrow. I do have a glue pen, but I find it's dry before I'm done putting glue. So I don't do it for larger pieces like this. If it's just a small little piece, then that's fine. I also find the glue a little thinner. I don't think it works as well as this does. It's the same company, but I prefer this. And then I'm just going to drop it about there, I think. Let's see before it dries too much. Let's move it up a little. And let's leave this side up so that I can curl that over the tile. like that. Uh, yeah, about there. Just going to remove some of this glue off here. Okay, now let's give it a good push. So let's let that glue and dry for a bit before we go on to the next step. And I wanted to do this one. This is a larger one than that one. And I wanted to use this little 
curl like that on there as well. It was, it's really pretty. I cut a bunch of them out. I think it is a memory box um, die. And, uh, you know, it's so versatile. And it's just the right size. And, I mean, have you ever tried to cut a paper version out? <laughs> takes forever. Sometimes that's all you need on a little project. It's just missing a little something. So, great way to use up your scraps by having little swirl dies because they tuck into little places, right? Okay, so there's my butterfly, but I do want to emboss it. Brilliant. Forgot to open the lid. Okay, I'm going to add more ink because it dries really fast when you're using photo paper. That's how photo paper is designed. And okay. Now I'm going to do this off camera because I'm going to blow everything away. Maybe I'm a little on camera, I don't know. I'm wanting it straight because I'm going to have this little guy crooked, but let's ink this side first. So these will print out in this color. Almost looks like cork that I did, but you know, you can colorize them with anything you want. Use a little ink or paint. It's different, different methods if you're wanting a different color. I just do most things in vintage, so I like a base vintage color. that one and this is the back piece There you go. All right. So next we will apply this one. And I want it this way. And then I've got my 
butterfly and my little word. So I think I'll do it like that. Let's get him glued down. So these I've just, you can do them in Word, you know, type out your your little words, make a whole page of them, and then um, print them out on some tea stained paper. And you got them for whenever you need them. So let's let that dry and we'll go back to the first one I did. So those two go together and we'll grab a paper clip if you're looking for the gold paper clips if you're in Canada Staples carries them in different sizes actually they carry a ton of paper clips all right so now, this is where you decide which side of the page you want it to slide on. You can either slide it this way or you can slide it this way. So that will depend on how you place your paper clip. I want it to slide this way, uh, but because this sticks out, if you put your paper clip in too far, this will stick out past your page. So pretend this is your page. Your paper clip ends there, you're going to have all this sticking out. So if you have an allowed room, uh, when you close your book cover and it sticks out further than the book cover, then you know you're going to mess it up. But if you put your paper clip out further, then you won't have a problem. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it where it says journey. So what you want to do is this. I need to line this up. Make sure. What I did was I I made these and then I made another. Uh, page so you're actually going to get two pages and one is the opposite like I flipped them because even though it looks like it's exactly the same it it wouldn't be if I just did them the, going in the same direction so then you kind of fool around with them to see you know where it is this I cut a little bit smaller because I didn't want it to stick out on the other side um, so what you want to do is I want it to go this way so you put this piece under here and push it into where you want it and you place it where you want it like so and then you're going to go and glue everything down. Now this is a nice small tight paper clip so it won't tip or anything it'll be where you need it to be. So, just go ahead and glue. You only need to glue the puzzle piece because obviously that's the only pieces that are going to go together. And you want to think about what you're putting on the on the front of it because you don't want your paper clip to be super thick because it just bulks up your book but you don't want it to be flimsy either because it'll tear the first time you take it apart and then you just mold it mold it around the paper clip so that it's glued in there really nice and firmly there we 
there you go. There's your first paper clip. Let that dry real well. That top part didn't stick together. And after it's dry, you might want to go back and just do your edges again with your um, marker just to make sure that there's no white showing. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's go ahead and do this one. And I'm going to do it the same way. But this one I want going in the opposite direction because sometimes you need one in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take another little paper clip. And I want it to go that way. So we will slide it on. Whoops. A little tougher when it's just paper. It's not uh, as sturdy as cardstock. Okay. So I want those together like that. Awesome. Okay, that should be enough glue. Uh, actually, I missed a spot here. I definitely want to make sure the end pieces and edges have enough glue. If you noticed, I did put some glue on the paper clip itself. There you go. There's two paper clips. Now, um, this one, I'm just going to do a little tuck on here. So this is my paper side. I need this side. This will be my front portion, and I'm. This is it. I'm. It's a simple, simple one. Um, it's just enough to put. You can put it on an envelope. Uh, if your envelope is, you know, like a flap or something, and it's kind of boring, you can put that on and make it a little tuck spot. You can put it on a plain pocket. If you've got a pocket on a page, put it, you know, somewhere on the pocket, and then you can add a little. Like I have, I'll show you if I can find it quickly. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, here we go. Like a tiny tag. That would fit in there and it would stay in there because it's small enough. Okay? So all I've done is I've been clear embossed this first and then I have an embossing pen somewhere on this mess of a desk and I just go around the edge and then dip it in gold and emboss it again. I just like the contrast of the dark and the light, uh, or the, sorry, the shiny and the dull is what I meant to say. Now I'm looking for this. I love making little ephemera pieces, little tuck spots, and the ways you can use bits and pieces so you don't throw out those little pieces of lace and whatnot. I should do this side. 
Oh, I don't. Yeah, actually I do because I know it's a tuck spot, but um, I wanted to make it a little thicker. And since this was already cut out to shape, I figured I'd just use the back of it. but I want no white showing. And it's much easier to do this before you actually put them together. So if you have some nice little um, things printed, but they're printed in paper, you can always, you know, back them with something else. And in that case, I like to use um, a glue stick. So let me grab some paper here. And I need these. I use a UHU. It's a really good glue. So make sure I've got them facing the right way. I know some people have trouble finding it. I don't know about other countries, but in Canada you can get it at Staples. Some dollar stores will carry it. Usually they're the smaller sticks, but still a small stick is better than none. <laughs> and But Staples carries like big packages of it. Move that off the other glue. Line those up. There. That, that's just going to make my tuck spot uh, firmer, a little bit more sturdy when you go to put stuff in it. And the bonus is then when you've done that, it doesn't matter which side you want. So if you want a left hand tuck or if you want a right hand tuck. I tend to the right, because <laughs> I'm right-handed, I guess. Uh, plus, that's, you know, you're, you're opening a book from left to right. So I tend to do it that side. Now, once that's dried more, I'll go around and cover up those little bit of white. It's not a huge deal. This is already done. So I want my puzzle piece to show. So we're going to do it like that. Not exactly sure where I need to put the glue. So make sure you do it on a surface that's wipeable. Now I think I had it. If you're wondering, this is just foam, but it has a hard back, so when I need to use a pokey tool or whatever. Plus, I put this down because my camera seems to reflect a lot of light out of here. Now, I want to do a little butterfly. Now, this one I do want to um, use some ink. This is cut out of a little bit of cardstock. I think it's the Martha Stewart butterfly, the one that there's three in one punch. It's so cute. Now this one, I'm not going to um, put embossing powder, but after I lay it down, uh, I'm going to uh, put some stickles or something like that on there to give it some shine. Sparkle, basically. Okay, so we're gonna go... Um, let's see, I think more like that. Yeah, I think like that. So let's put the memories down first.
These little words are part of the Graceful Women. I'm not sure if it's, I think it's the add-on kit. So I did them in different sizes. I like the little tiny ones. Okay, then I'll lay this one down. Guess what I found? That's the uh, embossing pen. I don't know why I stuck it in there. You're supposed to lay them flat. Okay, that looks better. And then I have Here you guys, uh, this one. I hadn't intended using this, but I remembered I had it. Now I have a little, I don't know what those are called. This is um, gel medium with a bit of, well, a lot of sparkle in it actually, not just a bit. And I'm just going to lay that down, but I don't want to cover the whole thing. I just want to put a little bit of sparkle. If you have any kind of uh, gel medium, you can do this yourself. If you've got your little sparkles just take a little bit of your gel medium out and add your sparkle to it. So you don't need to buy it already done, although it is convenient. This one is called Cosmic Shimmer Sparkle Texture Paste. And don't ask me where I got it, but it was 15 bucks <laughs> in Canada. Anyway. That's going to be a tuck spot. Now, I have in my store somewhere in some kit, I don't know, these little frames. I think they're in a vintage stuff kit. And I just cut out the center and I add some tea stained tracing paper. And then I just wanted to layer this for a little tuck spot. So um, I had stamped out these little tickets, the Tim Holtz, cut them all out. They're great little tuck spots. Then this is from the Graceful Women that I'm working on right now. And so I just cut her out. I thought it was make a cute little paper doll. This was pretty much the only one I could do that to, though, because it's a full body, sh body shot, but the other ones aren't. They're more head shots. So I did this one. And I printed her on a satin finish photo paper. When you're working with that, you want to make sure your hands are free of glue. I can't tell you how many times like this one actually has a piece of glue on it from my finger. Fortunately, it was a dry piece. But yeah, I try and make sure that my fingers are glue free. It's not always easy. And then I have some of this meshy stuff. I thought it was really cool. I don't know if it'll work because it's very curly. It's a plastic kind of a thing because you can melt the heck out of it. 
but let's try twisting it up and seeing if I can flatten that out somewhat. Yeah, a little bit. I just want it to adhere to this a little better. So let's get out my little baby clip. Just to hold it in place. Let's see if I like it. Alright, so we got that. I've got the little Paris ticket. Uh, I was actually going to go the other way because she's facing this way. Uh, I'll just turn it around. Aren't I brilliant? Okay. I think she's going to lay on here. Hang on. Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm not left-handed, you guys. Clearly, I'm not left-handed. I want that um, hanging down, maybe. And then I do want to put the ticket, I think, in front of the mesh. And I have this V for vintage. And then I have a little bit of a, this is just out of a piece of lace, but I cut all the way around it. Had this stuff too. I thought this was cool, but I don't think it'll actually show. Well, now that I have sort of that layout, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. So we'll start by moving this. And we'll glue this in. This is that Tim Holtz ribbon acetate and this stuff is pretty easy to work with. If you use a uh, heat gun to straighten out the curl, just don't hold it too long. You actually don't need to. It, it works super fast. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to put the mesh down. Now it won't stick very well right away, but you do need to put glue down. So I'm just going to randomly put it on here. Not sure where it's going to touch. So we'll do that I think. The problem doing that is uh, sticks to your fingers, so use a little bit of parchment paper. I just stamped these out on some um, file folder that I had tea stained.
parchment is your friend when it comes to gluing. Okay. Then this is going to go about here. So we don't need to glue the top of her head because she's not going to hit anything. for vintage and just this little tiny piece I wanted to add In this case I'm using the uh, the ink that doesn't react to water so for something like this because it's got a shine on the paper uh, the distress ink it wouldn't work it would smear everywhere So you see the layout is on an ang like a triangle shape. For some reason they say that uh, it's more pleasing to the eye in a triangle shape. I agree with them just because when you look at something that's got stuff in every corner of a page, your eye doesn't know where to focus. So whatever it is that you're wanting to feature, it gets lost in the chaos. And there you go. There's your little tuck spot. I think that turned out really cute. I like that. Okay, and I have one more. We're going to make this a tuck spot. I've already added some washi on here, but I think it needed more. Now, this is also cut out from the Graceful Women. Uh, I think I want to use brown. No, not that one. This one. I believe it's from the add-on kit. And so is the frame. I just wanted to show what you can do with those. She stands out a little more. Sorry, I got glue hanging off my fingers. Okay, yeah, but it needed something else. So I pulled out this washi, and I think I'm going to put it on the edge here. Oh. 
like that. So you've got a bit of a contrast. Gives her a little bit more frame. Um, I have these, the Tim Holtz, what are they called? Paper, these, botanical. Um, have to say, once I pulled it all apart, not super thrilled with it. Um, yeah. And they're too thick, so I peel them off. That's just kind of what I do. And I'm going to ink it because I do want it a little bit more grungy. And again, you're going to want to use a permanent ink for this. I really wish that, um, what's the name of that felt? It'll come to me, you guys. They don't make the tip in a paint version, paint tip version, but it's permanent ink. And I think it would be fantastic. Sharpie, that's it. They have like a chiseled or they have like a writing tip, but they don't have a, like a paintbrush tip, which would be awesome. So if people from Sharpie are looking at this video, <laughs> please make one. I think that would be so handy. There we go. That does look a thousand times better. All right, now I wanted to tuck this behind her and I think I'm gonna I'll probably trim it off but uh, let's do this for now and see where we're at and then I wasn't sure what else I wanted to do I have these little swirls that are also part of the kit some pieces on here. Oh, I had this. <laughs> I thought it was cute. It says ooh la la. I think I'm going to cut that out and use that. Or, no, maybe I'll use this one. Photo op. That's kind of cute. I don't get a chance to use these. I made these years ago. And I always forget to actually add words to stuff. I think it just makes such a difference when you do. And we'll ink that up. Grunge it up a little. I sure love this color. I wish I could find something in the clear that was close to this color. This one's called sepia, but it's definitely brown, you know? Just that I had to throw my other one away because it, it died. trim this off first because it's distracting to me. And the edges on this one too. Much harder to ink these. I usually just use the felt. But I do want that there. It's almost like giving her wings, isn't it? <laughs> kind of cute. I wonder if I should pull that down more. Yeah, I think I'll cut some more of that off.
That's kind of neat. I'll decide where to put that later, but do I want a little bit of trim? Um, I don't have much sitting here. This is why I like to prep ahead of time because this is me. <laughs> Take forever to uh, figure out what I wanted to use. And where did I put my dish? Maybe um, I should do a little bit of that gold, or I could do I could do those again. Where are they? I have them sitting here somewhere. You wouldn't believe the mess. Oh, here they are. It might be too much swirl. Maybe. Let's see, I've got some done on a mirror paper. It just might be too much swirl. Let's glue this one down first because I know for sure this is where I want that. Sorry if you can hear my stomach growling. I'm intermittent fasting today, so I always go through this further. About an hour when I wake up and then it goes away and I'm good all day. There we go. Don't know how I managed that, but I did. Okay, that's on there. That will be helpful. Um Just sometimes you need a little bit of shine, you know? I wonder. Let's see, this one's the opposite direction. not doing it for me you guys okay yeah I like that okay let's glue that one oh crap I think I is that the one I inked? Yeah, it is good. Yeah, good, good, good. I like that. Okay, but, oops, stick, 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 stick. But do I do another? Yeah, I like that too. But this one I have to ink because I didn't do that. It's just so much fun playing with this and 
I've been working so hard on that journal and doing uh, craft along videos so that you guys can follow as I make it. But it's very um, tiring. And uh, we've got so much going on at the house with the Renos. Okay, I think I'm going to like that. So let's do a little bit of glue here. And tuck that in there. And then glue this. Should have put a little glue under it, but it'll be fine. It'll all stick down. Just make sure I put enough. Alrighty. And right about there, I think. nice. Okay. And what a wop is going to go. Uh, kind of don't want to put it at her butt. <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, it, it actually looks okay there. Unless I put it forward, covering up almost all of the flowers, but oh well. No, I think I'll put it back. Yeah. There we go. So there's another corner for you. Little tuck. Excellent. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial. Super easy. You just, you know, play with a bunch of layers. Use different um, things to stick stick them down. Like I use a real low tack um, washi tape sometimes. Don't try not to use the really good stuff because you'll tear your paper. Um, but yeah, it's just all about playing and seeing what you like and uh, adding those little tiny touches, right? Have a great day, you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Bye.